Hey there, I'm Aaron Cheslock. Welcome to In Depth with Fox Carolina Sports, where we try to go beyond the game, off the field, and get to know some of the top local athletes and coaches that uh, have strong ties to the upstate. And this week, I can't think of anybody who is more local than the gentleman we have joining us now, Travell Wharton, uh, one of the best players to ever come out of the upstate, and really the state of South Carolina. Travell, first of all, how you doing, man? It's... Uh, it's new digs for you up in D.C. I am doing well. Um, you know, I'm a southern guy from the upstate of South Carolina. I got to get used to this cold weather. It's snowing like crazy, and, but it's going well up here. When you look at the season that you just went through, it's your first time playing outside of the Carolinas. Um, well, you had the one year in Cincinnati, but – uh, you know, you had the knee injury there. Is that right? right? I'm remembering that right. right. So right. this is your first time since then being outside of the Carolinas for a football season, and it was the most tumultuous football season in the history of the game. Uh, if you could, just from a mental standpoint, the last year or so for you, what's it been like? It's been weird in the sense that I get the job last January and I'm leaving Carolina really for the first time and moving my family. It's not just me, just adjusting and finding a place to live and, you know, the dynamics of schools for my kids because they've been in one spot forever. Um, and once you find that, you the, the pandemic hit. So no moving is kind of doing everything back here in Charlotte and I'm not even in DC. So you're trying to do everything remotely adjusting and moving that ain't even talking about the football aspect of not of being a first year coaching staff and going somewhere and trying to implement the playbook to guys and you're doing it all on zoom so you don't know a guy can be nodding his head yeah I got you coach but you really don't know because he haven't went out there and practiced it and, and messed up so you can teach it or coach it and to, to the season the uncertainty all summer you know you're thinking this you know what we're dealing with in the world and it's, it's a huge issue and you just football are we going to have it aren't we going to have it and then we move forward in the season you really don't know what you have because you haven't had a chance to spend that time so it was a crazy year going into games at empty stadiums and so you have to be, really be protective of your calls that you make that crowd noise would really cover up and nobody can hear and to, it became just a normal routine for us just getting in routine that's how we are we are creatures of habit of getting into the room, how soon can we get into the routine and everybody doing their part to stay safe and protecting each other as we go back and forth in the building. So it was a one of those years that I, I will always remember just because it was a moving and it was a transition year. But, you know, overall our team came together and that's what it was all about, like building that, that atmosphere of we can get it done together as long as everybody put in the work. What's the thing that's going to stand out most to you when you look back on it? Now that you've gone through it, um, I'm sure there were times where it seemed like that season, uh, you know, couldn't get there soon enough and then simply did not seem like it was just dragging on because uh, you just – you didn't know from week to week. I mean, you had to coach a unit that is uh, – it needs to be as consistent as a group as really any unit in all of sports. Right. And you don't know who you're going to have out there from week to week aside from the normal injury stuff. Uh, and then, you know, you're – dealing with young men who are all kind of type A personalities <laughs> that are being told you have to do this and this and this uh, when they're not really used to being told to do anything. So I'm just curious about the challenges of all that stuff that comes outside of putting in the new playbook and all that, dealing with uh, a group of young men that you guys are all kind of navigating these waters for the first time. Yeah, and that was going to be the toughest part because we haven't spent time together. And usually you build that relationship in the off season, where you get to know the guys. You're not spending all the hours together, but, you know, Monday through Friday is in the off season. You, you're communicating, you're meeting, you're going over stuff. You get to know them personally, you get to know who you're dealing with until, you know, we just met the guys really and got to work together in training camp. And like you said earlier, you go through the rigors of, you're trying to put together a team to play or your, your group of guys who are going to play together before the season even gets started. And then you go through the season and you got to deal with injuries and everything else. And with well, this year, you can get the call on Saturday morning that somebody can come in contact with the COVID situation and 
with the contact tracing, you can lose your whole unit. That's what you have to prepare for. Man, it's a possibility that the game will still play and we can lose our starting five because they've been in close contact. So that was one of the deals where you can lose a coach or this and that. So that was one of the deals that really kept you on it and you knew how serious it was. So I, I really thank the guys and everybody in the building that we really did it, you know, well. We, we really dodged a bullet because we didn't have any instances where that came apart, you know, and it can happen, you know, you can do anything and catch it. So that right there was one of the, the moments that I'll always remember that we didn't lose anyone to it and, you know, and their families was healthy and we went through the rigors of already playing in the NFL and just getting to know guys. Guys really stepped up and bought into our system and wanted to learn. So it was like it, it's very encouraging when you get a guy, group of guys that you don't know that buys into it and ask the questions and want to learn it. So it just shows the great character of the room that we had and, you know, those guys tasting a little success and wanting more. What's your relationship with Coach Rivera? And really, how, how has it changed since your time at Carolina and certainly uh, this past season with all that he had to go through? Man, you know what? I always respected Coach Rivera because no matter when you was playing, he never swayed, he never panicked. When the season was going good, the season was going bad, he stayed the same. And as a leader, you didn't see him emotionally about nothing. It was a straightforward. His message was straightforward. And then how he attacked his diagnosis. You know, he attacked it straight on. He let us know right off the top uh, what was going on with him. And he was going to be there if he could physically be there. And he was. Man, you've seen him. You're like, man, ain't no way he's supposed to be out here coaching or doing this after what he's gone through, and you see the changes in his body. But, man, he never had an excuse. He was always there. You can tell it took a toll on him, but he'll bounce back. And, you know, I have a great deal of respect for him because he's always been real with me and real with the guys on the staff. You know, he's a great coach. When it's family time, he'll let you know it's family time. Get out of this office. Go and handle you and be with your family. That's important. And football, we'll handle the football aspect. And, you know, as a young coach, that's what you want to hear because you hear so many horror stories of sleeping in the office and doing this and doing that. You don't see your family. He was been great through it all and really has been a great mentor for me because he played the game and he transitioned so you can see it done and the things that you have to learn and grow. So just his courage and his dedication to the team and how he acted from meeting him in 2011 as a player and 2020, how he's really grown as – just being a top-notch guy all the way through, man. And, and I'm very fortunate to have him in my corner. So it's, it's always been good to have Coach Rivera, somebody you can bounce professional ideas, uh, questions off of, and personal. And he's been great. He's been a rock. How, how is the family? You, you move out of the Carolinas, you move your entire family with you, and you've got four kids ranging from toddlers to teenagers. Yeah. That's a major change for them. And – when you put uh, when you take your family on this kind of journey uh you know you're dealing with stuff as a father as well as a football coach how have you managed to split your time um how are they handling the move and certainly uh you know with the pandemic in here as well that certainly complicates all those matters it, it was a strange feeling because we move in a neighborhood and just telling my kids was hard i was like man i'm the dad well, yeah, we're going to move. We got this. And just telling them because they've been so ingrained in Carolina, being close to grandparents on both ends and just having that access. We can take a day trip and visit both sets of grandparents and do all that. We're moving a little further. We, it's not like we're moving to the West Coast or anywhere where we have to fly. We still can drive there. But, man, just give my kids to convert over. They're lifelong Panther fans. I'm like, you can continue to be lifelong Panther fans. And my five-year-old and my 15-year-old, my two girls in the middle, they was like, all right, we moving. They were the hardest one, my oldest and my youngest, because my, my oldest grew up with the guys that, quote, unquote, are superstars and their kids, and she used to go on a birthday party. So this was kind of like, hold on, I'm leaving my friends. I'm, what's going on? And she's going to high school. So that was the biggest thing. She's, gonna be, she's a ninth grader. I was like, oh, man, there's going to be a change here. So dealing with that, and my five-year-old, who's, you know, he's a Christian McCaffrey fan, Cam Newton fan, and all that. So when those guys start to retire and leave, it made it a little easier. Like, are we going to move? You guys it isn't with the Carolina Panthers anymore. But just them being right here in the Carolinas, and this is all they know, 
we kind of took it on as a journey, as a family. So we talk about things, and it ain't just, hey, this is how it's going to go. We kind of suggest, how you feel about this? This is going to be fun. The hardest part is we got kids in the neighborhood, and with the pandemic, you kind of can't just let the kids be kids. You know, that was that was the hardest part for them. And they still meet people, and they're still doing that stuff, and they're meeting people as they go. And I think it's harder for adults more so than kids, because kids going to meet, and they're going to find friends, no matter where they go, they can find one person or two. And just seeing them adapt to it, it's been great. My wife and I was always scared, like, man, how they going to handle the adjustment, a new school, new this. But they've been troopers with it. It's been an adventure for them. Um, and I've been very proud of them just handling it. I'm like, man, you guys are really handling it. I hope we're here for a good while and not having to bounce and do all the other things that you see coaches do. But we just taking it in stride and it's been a good change for us. It's been a change up cause it's different, but at the same time, the sense of community that we found up there is the same that we have here and they still talk to all their friends here. So it, I thought it was going to be tougher, but it was a little easier cause kids don't care. They just go out and play and have a good time. What's the thing that you miss most about the upstate and what does DC do better than the upstate? Uh, I miss the the atmosphere, the pockets, man. I'm a country boy, so I I like to go on rides, hang out, you know, with family. I miss my family and friends in upstate and in Charlotte just because it's all been connected. You know, being so close, I can go down. Even when I got home, I came and visit and because uh, I was gone for seven months, like from seven months to end of the middle of July to last week, you know, I was I was home. So it was a uh, uh, I haven't been home, so it was different. But just coming home, just feeling that, um, having sweet tea, having things of, of that nature. And then D.C. still isn't so far away of northern city. Um, I'm adjusting. I still have my favorite restaurants. I still need mom's cooking. I still need all the things. And you know, just, my friends and family, what I miss most here. But, you know, with everything going on, you was Zooming and Skyping and, you know, FaceTiming anyway. So with everything going on. But, you know, I'm adjusting to D.C., getting to know that. But I do not like the snow and the cold weather in D.C. I'm a layer-up guy. Um, I love uh, the weather in the Carolinas much better than what's going on in D.C. right now. It's, uh, you know, first of all, as a Baltimore boy, let me tell you, crab cake <laughs> is something that they do better up north, without question. Every time I go to the low country, they try to get me to eat their crab cakes, and I just I refuse. I'm I'm a snob <laughs> come to that kind of stuff. Um, when you think back now that you know you're you hung up your cleats for a few years now, you look back at your time at Hillcrest. And you look back at your time in Columbia with the Gamecocks. You know what a career you had there. Forty five or forty seven games you started. Um, really talented teams. What what do you when you think back to those days, what are the things that stand out to you most? Um, you know, maybe a story or two that fans would get a kick out of. You know, uh, in high school, you kind of grow up, you know, playing Pop Warner and rec league ball with guys. They was your rivals. And then you become – you go and play at Hillcrest and they become your teammates. Um, just really – the bond and the close relationships that I have with those guys today. Um, I was just in a couple of weddings of guys from high school and keeping up with them, you know, and that's, that's been the great thing. And when I got to Carolina, still having my same friends from high school who some of them end up going to, down in Carolina, but the bond that I had down there, we was very uh, blessed to have coach Lou Holtz as a coach and he was strict, man. He was a disciplinarian, but, that's what I needed at 18. And my father and my parents were, you know, teaching you the right way. And then you go to a coach that's teaching the right way. And that foundation, I thought the foundation I had in high school, the foundation that I you develop in the college really helped me in the league, you know, um, story time. Oh man, I, I got a million stories to tell and I don't know if I got enough time, but I, I just said that's that, acceptable for television. I know, I know. It's like, man, I get together with the guys, but I think the relationships been great. The relationships with, 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 uh, with athletes, with students, with, uh, you know, people that you come in contact, I think they're meaningful. And sometimes we rush to get to the next level, you know, in high school, you want to hurry up and get to college. In college, you want to hurry up and see if you got a chance to play in the pros. And you look back and like, man, those were some, some, some great times. I wish I had to just took advantage and just enjoy them more instead of rushing to the next phase. 
because that's all you know. I mean, I'm trying to get to somewhere and I'm trying to graduate. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. But those relationships that I developed with people uh, in high school, my rec league in high school, pros, college, they've been meaningful, man, because I look back at them now and those are the relationships that you lean on. And uh, I, I've enjoyed it, man. It's, it's funny that I played high school, college, and pros in the Carolinas and I'm finna turn 40 and I'm just now leaving the, the Carolinas for real. I'm like, man, that's unbelievable. I'm a country guy. When I'm in DC area, they can tell I'm not from there because of my accent. And I don't realize I have an accent because I've been in the Carolinas so long. And, and it's like, man, where you from? <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm from down South, but uh, just uh, the sense of family and uh, community has been great for me and my family and my growth. And I, I appreciate it. And I love my, my family and the community. It's, it's been great for me. It's been the foundation. I, I've been lucky to have such a sense of family and community my whole life. And, and that's what you try to find now. You know, you try to find that sense of family. But my time in Carolina, it was the best decision. I met my wife in English 101. So that goes to show how far I love my University of South Carolina. It, it's the foundation of, of my family now. But just being able with my parents and grandparents to watch me play ball. And, you know, you do a lot of stuff and you, you do it for the family and you know, you keep going because they encourage you and they, they keep motivating. I want to piggyback that off something you just said there. You know, when we look at the social media age, and certainly with young athletes, and you as a father now yourself, um, you know, athletes from the Pop Warner League, but really when you start high school ball, the ones that have a chance to move on, uh, you're consistently trying to get better. And that's the mentality you have to have. Do you think there is a flaw in the logic, though, that guys aren't taking a minute to embrace the moment that they're in as well? You know, I remember when I got married, I had a, an uncle cut, pull me aside and say, you know, everyone's going to be very demanding of you and you're going to feel like everything's going on. But take a minute with uh, Nicole, my wife, go stand at the side of the room and just look around. Take a minute and take it all in to make sure that you are in that moment at that time. And I feel like the kids that are playing in high school, the guys that are in college thinking about what's my draft grade, when's my, you know, when's the pro day, how do I get my 40 time down and all that, you know, they're not thinking about week eight, oh man, this, this, I'm playing at williams Bryce Stadium, how cool is this? You know, do, do you think that there is a flaw there that guy, maybe coaches at really all levels need to tell their kids a little bit more, you know, Stay in this moment uh, mentally at times so you can look back on this and uh, embrace that particular time in your playing career. You, that's some great advice because Coach Rivera used to always say, be where your feet are. You know, don't look so far ahead and plan this out. Enjoy this time. And that's, that's it. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in everything that's going on and you're just like, man, Enjoy right now because you look back at that moment like, man, why I didn't enjoy this mo moment more? And you never want to have any regrets. But I think with the age of social media and everything happened so fast, you know, with the cameras and the video and the everything else, and you just kind of fly through it, you don't have a chance because everybody's pulling at you. You can do this and you can do that. Where it's like, man, just take a, a, a moment and just look where you at and look how far you came and look at you know, where you at now and what you had to overcome to get to where you at now. And that should motivate you for, for the future. But I, I do think that, man, and I look at that now, um, where I'm at now, more so than anything else. Like, man, my kids are this age. I'm right here in my life. Let me enjoy it because I know in a couple of years they're going to be gone and me and my wife are going to be sitting back like, man, where did the time go? And, you know, it's busy now with everybody doing their activities in school and everything else. But just really enjoy the time because you, as you can see, man, it time is no pause button. I keep looking for the remote to pause time and just soak it in, but it's none. And we just got to take a moment just to be thankful for where we at right now and how can we get better and what we need to continue to work on. But at this time, enjoy the moment. So I agree. Enjoy the moment where we at right now. And you'll be amazed. You, uh, you play four years at Hillcrest. You play four at Carolina. You play a decade in the NFL. Why go into coaching? Why, why not take a break? Why not take a couple years? Uh, if I'm get, if I, my notes are correct, you retire in 2014 and you're hired on as an offensive line coach at SC. 
in 2015. And uh, it's not a long layoff there. Is that just nature of the mind? I got to stay in the game? You know what? I always thought I would be a high school coach. That's what was my plan. Like, man, I can go back and coach high school and do this. And right after I retired, my buddy Jordan Gross had a TV show with the Panthers. Let's get He's like, man, you got to come on and join my – because he had a podcast. And that's when everything was kind of going, hey, come on, let's do it. You and I do it. We go over to the house. We can write our segments. They kind of gave us free range, and we were just goofing off. We didn't really know. We just finished – playing ball, being ball players. We had no formal training at it, and people loved it, and they wanted to see our relationship. And uh, and then uh, did some little post-game show for the team, and it was just like, man, I still wake up early. I still want to do something. And getting, a, getting an opportunity with Coach Spurrier uh, during the lockout, I went down there uh, with uh, Mr. Hyman, who was the athletic director at the South Carolina, and Coach Spurrier. I spent some time with him just trying to figure out what was next in 2000. 10. It was 2010. I was like, man, what's next for me? Let me just see if I want to do it. And those opportunities kind of opened up later when uh, coaching positions became open and interviewing and doing all that stuff. But I, I, had, I couldn't sit. I can't sit still. I know that about myself. I can get a week off. I'm good from the season. Now I got to go back to work. My wife still look at me like I'm crazy. I set my alarm clock. I get up at five o'clock. I got to get going. I got to do something. I can't sit in the house. It'll drive me crazy if I sit. And I talked to my mom this morning. I was like, I can't sit in the house for a day. I got to be in a car. I got to do something. Like, I need my day planned out. So when I got into coaching, it was the right situation. I got the opportunity to go down to the University of South Carolina. And unfortunately, Coach, coach Spurrier resigned, like, in the middle of the season. So I got promoted from a quality control to a position coach. Six games. So I'm checking off a bucket list, man. I've coached offensive line at the University of South Carolina. Man, that's awesome. Like, if nothing else happened, I was able to do that. And then I did an internship, did that for one season. My son was born. And so I just kind of took a break that year when my son was born. And I went, uh, did an internship. I'm talking to my wife. I'm like, I should go and do an internship with the Panthers. I know the whole staff. I'm right here. I don't have to travel anywhere. I can just drive over. I did the internship. And I, they gave me so much work to do. I, I guess they was trying to, do, you know, coach was trying to see if I really wanted to do it. But I enjoyed drawing cards. I enjoyed looking at the ins and outs. And I learned so much during that internship when I guess anybody else was like, man, that's a lot of work. It was just fun. I'm like, all right, in the afternoons, I'm drawing 50 cards. But the guys was using my cards and practice and stuff like that. And it was just one of those things that was exciting, like, just to do it. I'm like, man, I, you know, you think you know football as a player, but it's a whole nother side to it as a coach to give it to the guys and interpret it and make sure they do the right techniques. And I just fell in love with the whole process. And it, it wasn't work. It didn't feel like work. It just felt like this is what I, I love doing this, you know, and I really enjoyed it. And an opportunity came to be an assistant O-line coach with the Panthers. And I was like, man, I'm in. I'm in. And, and just working for a great staff that guided me and encouraged me and just helped me along the way. It's been great, man. Four years as you know, going into my fourth year coaching in the NFL, it's been great. I've learned a lot, little technique stuff, how to present, how to draw. I, man, I draw so many cards and so much stuff. I'm like, man, <laughs> it's crazy because I'm like, you know, as a player, you you don't think about who has to draw all that stuff. And I feel, I'm, I get my feelings hurt when I see some of my packets I draw and the guys leave them on their desk. I'm like, man, you just don't know. I just spent three hours drawing all that stuff up. You're going to leave it right there. So I apologize to all my school teachers that I had. It's a lot of work goes into that just to prepare that day. And he's like, man, I, spent, I was here a long time last night getting you all this information and you look at it. Yeah, we good. Like, man, it's a lot of work goes into it, but I enjoyed it. I, I can't sit still. I enjoyed uh, teaching, which, which is co what is coaching, you know, he's coaching and teaching. It's a passion, man. I, I didn't think I would jump in it this way. I thought I would take some time. But, man, the opportunity uh, that I was given, man, I'm very fortunate and blessed. And it just kind of grew. I, I love what I do. I, I, we got time off, and I'm telling my wife, all right, I, I'm going to go in the office. I'm going to get me a workout in. I'm going to watch some film. I'm going to just grind and watch some film. I just enjoy doing it. And I, I never knew that this would be the transition for me. But it, it's worked out, and I just, I just love it. I love coaching. I love getting the phone calls from guys when they have a question afterwards, and they may not want to ask the whole group. And I'll get a text, hey, what's this coach? And we explain it. And, 
and my job is working with the young guys. So when you see a young guy, one of my young guys get some playing time, I'm really on edge like a parent, like, man, all right, remember what we talked about, this right here, go out there and play. And, and you see them have success, and that's the most rewarding part. You see them have success, and you encourage them, and you see what they go through from the day one, and now they can really teach the class on what you taught them. So I'm, I've been enjoying this ride. I'm, I know I'm very fortunate to be able to do it, and it's been great. It's really have. I, I thought I was going to be cheering, Aaron, uh, chilling, Aaron. I thought I was going to be chilling, coaching a little high school ball. I was coaching middle school ball with my daughters. It's like I thought I was, that was it, and then the opportunity to come and do this, and I, I love it. I, I really do. It's really helped me. And just, you know, I'm so much older than those guys now. I don't realize – I didn't realize that I was that much older. I'm not, I'm not that cool anymore. Like, man, I'm, I'm older, you know. But just uh, relating with the guys and going out there and coaching, it, it's really been fun. As we get set to wrap up here, what's what's next for you? Now you found this next uh, journey in your football life. Are we looking at calling plays sometime down the line? National discussion <laughs> is we need uh, more African-American head coaches. You certainly would fit the bill as far as a resume so far. What What is the uh, the end game that you'd like to get to at this point? I think keep developing myself. Uh, we spoke on it earlier, be where your feet are. Enjoy where I'm at now. Not, don't push it, but enjoy it. Continue to grow. grow. Don't, I don't think I have all the answers, and I know I don't have all the answers. My wife will let you know that. But uh, just grow and develop myself to be the best that I can possibly be. Take on, I take it, I'm taking it on, hands on, how to be a better leader because that translates how to be a better leader in my own household. Just being a better leader, um, learning all the ins and outs of the things I need to know and the things I didn't think I would need to know, just keep growing. I'm surrounding myself with people that are great and they're encouraging that, you know, promote it. And that's what's the, the biggest thing to help me. I get older coaches that give me compliment, but you, you, you're really working hard, man. You're, you're getting it. And that encourages you because they see the little things that you do. So for me, it's just being where my feet at and continue to grow and be better um, as a person and as a coach, as a dad, as a father, as a brother, husband, all those things, and just being with my feet in and just working hard. Final one for me before we let you go. I'd like to know when the first time you fell in love with football was and looking back on your career, all the years, all the practices you put in, if you could impart some wisdom on possibly some young football players growing up, what would you want to say to them? Maybe something you'd like to have done differently. Maybe something that uh, you uh, wish had gone a different way. What, what would you say, beginning with when you first fell in love with football? I first fell in love with football. I was eight years old, and I was a running back, believe it or not. Fountain Inn Recreation, number 22 for the Mustangs, Fountain Inn white jerseys. And I have that white jersey framed in my house. Uh, Coach Everett Turner, my dad, Glenn Wharton, it was a – uh, Dale Watson, a lot of coaches that I had. I remember that staff, and it was a bunch of buddies, and we all played, and I scored a touchdown on, like, my second touch. It was just a sweep, 28-pitch sweep around the right side. I scored a touchdown. The crowd goes wild, and it was like, wow, you know? And then I had older cousins that was at Hillcrest that was playing really well, and that was my ghost. I had to be better than those guys. And uh, it was that moment that I was like, I like football. I, okay. I didn't like to practice. I didn't like all that other stuff as a kid. You don't know. You're just going, I don't want to get tackled. I don't want to, the pile to fall in. But scoring a touchdown, my first game, 28 pitch sweep, 28 pitch sweep to the right side. I still remember it. White jersey, number 22. And uh, I fell in love with the game then, and it just kept growing. I, You know, people encouraged. I had great coaches in, through the Fountain and Rec Department. Uh, Manuel Sullivan, P.D. Terry, those guys who I talked to today, they still are calling me up. And just that relationship with those guys, and they encouraged me. But uh, having that, that's when I fell in love. I would tell young players to embrace the change. I thought I was going to be a running back. I was 5'10". Going to the ninth grade, I'm 6'2". I hit a growth spurt, you know, and they want to move me to tight end. Oh, I don't want to be a tight end. I want to touch the ball. And lo and behold, I ended up being an offensive tackle at Hillcrest. And it was the – Coach felt seeing it, you know, like, man, with your speed and your size, you can be a great – and I grow to 6'4". I'm at the same height, you know, that I am now. And he's seen it and just embracing what coaches see. 
You know, don't think it's bad. They can see something. They've been doing it for a long time, and they can see the potential, and it worked for me, you know, just being faster, getting stronger, and it just kind of separated me. So I would tell young players, but most important, get your grades. You hear it all the time. Get your grades. Be a good student because I'll tell anybody, my schedule today and my schedule then, you spend more time in a meeting room than you do actually out on the practice field. So learn how to study because you're going to have to study a playbook. You're going to have to study. You're going to have to be a dad. You're going to have to do all those things. So learn. Take your time to be a good student. And if you're a good student, it'll open up so many opportunities for you. And don't be the class clown. Be a good student. That football will take care of itself as long as you work. But mainly put in the same amount of work, if not more, and be a great student. And, and, and that'll, be very, uh, that'll be very beneficial for you for the rest of your life. One of the best to ever do it. Travell Wharton, uh, as local as it gets here in the upstate of South Carolina. You get any uh, – do you get to give your opinion on what the new team name is going to be up there? I have no idea what the team name is going to be. I'm like, man, I'm so far down the line of asking or, or giving any suggestions of what's going on up there. I'm just minding my business. So <laughs> we got to play no matter what they name it. We still got to go out there and play. So I'm like, man, whatever y'all name it, I'm good with it. And let's go out there and, and, and win some games. <laughs> Travell, uh, congratulations on a playoff run, your first season in D.C. Uh, good luck to you moving forward in your coaching career. And certainly take some time, enjoy the rest of the offseason. Hopefully we'll get you back on here soon. Thank you. I appreciate you, Aaron. All right, Travell Wharton, that's a wrap for this week's episode of In-Depth with Fox Carolina Sports. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you here next week.